Merci. 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 In the last video, we went into Dirk's studio and he showed us how he was putting together one of his paintings, setting up a coordinate system, breaking up his, um, his canvas, his painting into four different quadrants, introducing lines, angles, objects, elements into his painting. And one thing he showed me um, uh, during that process that sort of blew me away because it's, you know, as soon as he started showing it to me, I sort of went, that's mathematics. That's something I've worked on with my, with my students. And if you've done uh, grade eight or grade nine, in mathematics, uh, you would have seen this, which is basically the concept of similar triangles, similar objects really, where one object is just a smaller version of another object. And once Dirk showed me this, he sort of opened up a few doors for me because all of a sudden I realized, uh, you know, th m the walls that I use to do my mathematics are basically my canvas. And uh, I sort of realized that I can start introducing depth into my uh, into these videos so you know walking around I found this uh, nice little place uh, where we can actually introduce a little depth and I'm going to show you how this concept works and it's basically something that we've covered in series one uh, the concept of similar triangles and using cross multiplication something we talked about in series 3a um, to solve an equation Okay, so what we're going to do is go to Dirk's studio right now in the pro, uh, from the previous session that we had with Dirk, and he's going to show us this little method that he uses to introduce objects before he actually starts putting, uh, you know, drawing the stuff onto his canvas, uh, just to make sure he wants he wants that element in his painting. Okay, and as soon as uh, we're done with Dirk, as, as soon as he he shows us how he's um, put together, uh, how he uses this method to introduce objects into his painting, what we're going to do is come back here and uh, do a little experiment uh, and see if it works out. I just went like this and said, hey, this looks pretty cool. Now, I don't know if I should, uh, what you have to do is hold it over like this, and uh, then you can see the whole composition, you know, with this, like this, and with uh, this sort of covered, but I, I might just, you know, you do it like this again. Oh, you so know? what do you, you hold it up, oh my god. No, right? That's cool. <laughs> right, that's I cool. never even thought about that. Uh, uh, but you hold something up so that, you know, uh, you know, you can imagine it without, uh, 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 like, actually doing it. Doing it. <laughs> this is funny, right? This is like, but like you, you close your eye, right? You uh, close one eye. Uh, you close one eye for sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That way you have one view going in. Exactly. Just all perspective. And that's yeah. cool. <laughs> Here, let's show this. Guy. Yeah, this is. You like this? Yeah, yeah. Actually, let's do this. Let's do this with the camera. Let's do this with the camera. Well, see this? Mm -hmm. All you do with the perspective. Yeah, there, sort of, right? Yeah. You can see what it looks like before uh -huh. you work yeah. on your painting, right? Exactly, yeah, because uh, that's one of the first things I put on there. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's awesome. You can move it around and move it in different places, do whatever you want with it. Mm -hmm. So what Dirk ended up showing us was basically uh, the concepts that we talked about in series one, which is similar triangles. And the way we can use this method to do our little homework is basically try to draw something on this wall, and this wall is closer to the camera than this wall, okay? So what we're gonna do is draw something here, which is gonna be a happy face. It's the simplest thing I can think of drawing. Happy face over here instead of a triangle. And we're gonna draw the happy face over here. And this happy face is gonna be bigger than this happy face, but on the camera, they're gonna look to be approximately the same size. Hopefully, anyway, this is our homework. This is our little experiment that we're gonna to try to do, right? So what we need to do is do some measurements. And the measurements we need is basically the distance from the lens, from this point here to this wall over here, right? And from the lens to 
this wall over here. And what we're going to do with that is that's going to be our anchor point. What we've talked, what we're we've talked about, and what we are talking about in series four, which is basically units and ratios, because this is what we're going to use. We're going to use ratios to be able to uh, draw our objects, our happy faces, so they actually look to be the same size even though they're different sizes, okay? So what we need right now is basically the distance from the lens to the first wall. So we're gonna measure this. 320 centimeters, okay? So the distance from the lens to the first wall is 320 centimeters, okay? And I'm gonna be using metric because metric is a lot easier to deal with than imperial, okay? Uh, so 320 centimeters, and what we need now is the distance from the lens to the back wall. 530. So 320 and 530. So the distance from the lens to the first wall is 320 centimeters, and the distance from the lens to the back wall is 530 centimeters. So what I'm gonna do right now is draw our happy face on this guy over here, and then we'll lay out our problem, our cross multiplication um, equation that we need to solve to be able to draw the circles to be look similar, but one bigger, one smaller. So I can fit a happy face, which is approximately 40 centimeters in diameter, right? Because it's gonna be a circle going across 40 centimeters in diameter. And what we're gonna do is try to put it at the same height as the lens. So here, I'll show you what the distance is. Boop. So this guy is approximately, uh, 145 centimeters in height. So 145 centimeters in height. So let's do this. So this is the height of the camera lens because what we're gonna to try to do is make it a triangle with the, with the line of sight coming across like this, straight out, right? So we want that to be the center of the circle. So 145, so this thing, the diameter of the circle is going to be 40 and the center of that is going to be 20 so that's the center of our circle so what we're going to do is uh, the diameter of this thing is 40 centimeters right so the radius is 20 centimeters the distance from the lens to the first wall was 320 centimeters, the distance from the lens to the back wall was 530 centimeters, right? And that's gonna be our conversion ratio, right? That's gonna be our fraction that we're gonna use, right? So what we're gonna do is, so what we're gonna do is set it up as a fraction equal to, it has to be proportional to the diameter of this versus the diameter of the back wall, the diameter of the circle that we're gonna put on the back wall, and that's the unknown. So we're gonna set up our little equation over here. So let's use uh, blue chalk uh, to do the little calculation, okay? Oops, sorry. Oh, fish! Ah, oh, that's cool. Can you show, can you show the camera? No, please. Marks, marks. No, no, please, please. Please, let's see. Let's see. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you. Thank you. So what we got, uh, the ratio that we're using is going to be 320 divided by 530. Ah, hopefully that comes out. But 320 divided by 530, and that fraction has to be proportional to the diameter of this circle versus the diameter of the other circle that we're gonna draw, right? So that's the other fraction that we're gonna set up. So that has to be equal to the other ratio, the other fraction. So 320 divided by 530 has to be equal to 40 divided by X. 
x's are unknown, right? So what we're gonna do is basically use cross multiplication, which is just basically grab the x, bring it up here, and grab 530, kick it up there, right? But before we do this, what we're gonna do is simplify our fractions first, right? Simpl simplify before you start solving stuff because smaller numbers are easier to deal with than bigger numbers. So the zero is gonna kill zero here, right? Those two zeros are gone, so it's basically 32 divided by 53 is equal to 40 over x. So we're gonna grab this guy, kick it up, and we're gonna grab this guy, kick it up here. So what we're gonna end up having is 32x is gonna be equal to 53 times 40. So what we have right now is going to be 32x is equal to 53 times 40. Now 53 times 40, you can do this by hand, but I brought a little calculator uh, because I'm limited with the amount of space I have, right? But you should know how to multiply, you should know how to divide, add and subtract, and again, series one, that's where we cover that stuff, right? Basic mathematics. So 53 times 40, that gives us one, uh, 2,120. So 2,120 divided by 32 is going to give us 66.25 and that's the diameter of the circle that we're going to have we're going to need to make sure that this happy face is going to be proportional to the other happy face right so the answer you know when we solve for this is just going to be 66.25 and we're just gonna round it down to 66, right? So the diameter of the circle that we need is gonna be 66 centimeters. And that's what we're gonna draw over here. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is uh, use green chalk and draw a little happy face over there, 66 centimeter diameter. So 66 divided by two is 33. That's gonna be our center. And what we need is another one this way. This is how big the circle is compared to my head. And this is how big the circle is compared to my head. So that's basically it. That's uh, what Dirk ended up showing me. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden it came to my mind to do something like this, uh, just to try it out, just to see if it works uh, with a camera lens, right? Uh, allowing me to add depth to my videos. Um, what we're gonna do right now is uh, basically, I've already gone back and talked to Dirk. I've already gone to his studio and he's shown me some of the other stuff that he's working on. And what he's been doing is introducing the golden rectangle to his drawings, to his paintings, to his design, to his structures. So we're gonna talk about the golden rectangle and I've come across it through the Fibonacci sequence. So we're gonna talk about the golden rectangle, the Fibonacci sequence, and take a look at some of the other work that Dirk has been working on. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Uh, you know what I do? I, you know, take a... Oh, right behind you on the wood. The ruler? Well, the is ruler, okay, this is uh, very important. I mean, if I want to draw a line, I'm going to put the ruler here. Yeah. Okay, then I take an X-Acto knife. It's right here, sorry. Okay. With the X-Acto knife, so you don't see the line, really. You know, I go like this. Zoop. After that, I'm going to take the paintbrush, you know, and in this case it's an orange line. Yeah, yeah. So, and so I, you know, find the line on the on the canvas that I just, you know, made with X-Acto knife and I just, you know, paint it in, you know. And, uh, so how, how sharp is, what are you painting in with? Is it, is it ink it's, or uh, is uh, it no, no, it's like oil paint. Here it's oil it. paint. You're using oil paint for oil this. Oil paints. And this is... Well, you know the brush I use, it's a very, very thin one. Like that. Oil paints? Oil paints. And, and this is this is how <laughs> like I don't know if you can see. Like that's my finger beside here. I'll put my nail behind it. That's how that's how thin it is, right? That's how thin it so is. so now, straight this, up oil you know, paint. thing and then I just, you know, find the other side of the line and I just, you know, color it in. And it's, and it's you know, uh, basically it's very you know simple work. And it's boring as hell. You know, the idea comes like, uh, like in, you know, three minutes. Uh, the execution, you know, takes uh, like a month or two months or three months or six Or five months. years. For, well, yeah. this, is, this one is special. This one's yeah. special. Yeah. This one's That's special. special yeah, this really one's special. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's five years, you know, with the, with the texture in the background. Yeah. yeah, yeah, five years of the texture. Yeah, that's right. The texture in the background.
So basically something like this, can you guys see this? Yeah, you can. Something like this would take you a few months to do. Yeah, uh, that would take me maybe, you know, three months to do. You know, three uh, months to do. Uh, well, yeah, three or four months, you know, depending if I'm working on it every day. Okay. If not, fun. Yeah. I'm the nerd here. So I, and how did they, <laughs> I mean, I'm like this, you know, because <laughs> I can't see properly either. So I'm like that. Do you usually uh, paint the edges of the line, then come back with a thicker brush and go through? No, uh, no uh, you're doing uh, the whole thing. I do everything uh, right away because I believe, like, if you paint a painting, you know, uh, like with one brush, yeah. Also, uh, that also, you know, you know, helps, you know, the whole thing, you know, you know, you pull itself together. Consistent, stay consistent. Uh, so each brush is different. Yeah, brush is different. Brushes act differently. Yeah, they uh, hold the ink. Uh, they hold the uh, uh, oil differently. Yeah.